Hey guys, Sam Vance here. Today I'm going to be showing you how to beat Night 1 on Five Nights at Freddy's, as well as going into a lot of the basic fundamentals of the game that will be required for you to beat the harder levels as well. So let's go ahead and get into it. Obviously, Night 1 is a very easy night. I'm not saying you guys need an in-depth guide or anything to actually beat Night 1 because it is very easy. But it's always best to start at the absolute basics, and I'd recommend watching this video even if you've completed Night 1 already anyway, as I'm going to be going into a lot of the basic fundamentals of Five Nights at Freddy's that are going to help you regardless of what skill level you are. So here we are in the office. You got your door buttons, you got your light buttons, you know, all that good stuff. You got Freddy's nose that you can honk, you got phone guy calling you, which I'm going to go ahead and mute once it pops up so you guys can hear me better. Alright, so let's take a look at the camera monitor. There are a lot of cameras in Five Nights at Freddy's, of course. There's the show stage, Cam 1A, the dining area, Cam 1B, the backstage, Cam 5, Pirate Cove, Cam 1C, Supply Closet, Cam 3, West Hall, Cam 2A, West Hall Corner, Cam 2B, East Hall Corner, Cam 4B, East Hall, Cam 4A, Cam 6, The Kitchen, and the restrooms, cam 7. So let's go back to the show stage here and close the camera monitor. So out of all of these cameras, there's only one camera that's going to be consistently important no matter what night you're playing, no matter what your strategy is, and no matter what situation you're currently in. That camera is cam 1C, Pirate Cove. This is the camera that you're going to be looking at the most on the early nights, and it is definitely one of, if not the most important cameras in the entire game. And let's go ahead and talk about why. Pirate's Cove, as I'm sure you know by now if you've done any research on the game or played through it yourself, is where the animatronic Foxy is. Foxy will progressively move closer to you. Uh, he'll pop his head out of the curtain and then he'll be standing over here. And then the curtains will be empty and he'll be rushing down the West Hall. Foxy works differently than any other animatronic and he's definitely one of the most deadly. He's also the only animatronic that can actually attack you while you have the camera monitor down. So for night one specifically, I would recommend just sitting here and not really doing anything up until the clock reaches 2 a.m. No animatronic can move at all on night one. This is very important. Keep in mind, this only applies to night one. No animatronic can move at all up until 2 a.m. So once the clock strikes 2 a.m., that's when you're going to want to put our strategy into action. But for now, you don't really have to do anything. The reason for this is that Night 1's AI levels, which are the same AI levels that are used on the custom night, initially read 0000. Therefore, no animatronic can move at all. However, how this game works is at 2 a.m., at 3 a.m., and at 4 a.m., the AI difficulty of certain animatronics is increased depending on the night. So on Night 1, at 2 a.m., Bonnie's AI will increase by 1, making it a total of 1. At 3 a.m., the AI level of every animatronic except for Freddy will increase by 1, making it 0 to 1, 1. And finally, at 4 a.m., the AI level of every animatronic besides Freddy will once again increase by 1, making it 0, 3, 2, 2. So it's now reached 2 a.m., Bonnie's AI level is hit 1, and he should now be active. There we go, he's gone. So how Bonnie works in this game, unlike any other animatronic, is he can actually teleport wherever he wants. It's not exactly clear why he can do this, but he can. So once he leaves the show stage, if you're extremely unlucky, he could be right outside your door for all you know. He's not currently, but theoretically he could be. So let's look around and try to find him. There he is, he's currently in the dining area, so he didn't go very far. Once he leaves the dining area, once again, he could teleport anywhere. He could be right outside our door, he could be in the supply closet, he could be in the backstage. He could be literally anywhere. So, at least on the left side, there's only certain cameras Bonnie can go through, which, again, this is very basic stuff, but we might as well go through it while we can. The show stage, the dining area, the backstage, the west hall, the supply closet, west hall corner, and right outside your left door. Those are the only locations that Bonnie can go. And he is now in the West Hall, it appears. Yes, he is. So Bonnie is currently in the West Hall. He moved there from the dining area. So let's go ahead and just wait for him to come a little bit closer. You will hear footsteps. When you hear those kinds of deep footsteps, it means that either Bonnie or Chica are moving around. 
It doesn't really mean where, it doesn't get louder if they're close to you or anything, at least not in the original game. But it's important to listen for those, just to know if they've moved without having to check the camera. Another thing that I recommend about Night 1 is making sure to... You don't have to check Pirate's Cove specifically because of how Foxy works, which I'll explain a bit more in depth when we have to actually deal with him in Night 2. Uh, like when he starts becoming a lot more active. But you actually don't have to look at Pirate Cove in order to keep Foxy from moving. You simply have to have the camera monitor up. So I'd recommend checking the cameras. The most optimal way to do it on night one is to use it to pinpoint where Bonnie and Chica are so that you save power checking your lights and you save power checking Pirate's Cove. And having to use the camera monitor a little bit more to find out where Bonnie and Chica are while also being like, okay, well, I gotta keep an eye on Foxy now. Like, I gotta figure out where Bonnie and Chica are. Bonnie just moved. He is not outside the door yet. Let's go check where he is. He is in the West Hall corner, so Bonnie is a point of frustration for a lot of new players, and I can understand why, because of how he teleports, the fact that he shows up the door really frequently. If you're new, you might panic seeing he's right next to you and just close this door immediately. You don't actually need to do that until he appears in the blind spot over here, so just be a little patient. I know it might be scary for new players, but just wait for him to move there. He should be doing that any second now, actually, unless he decides to teleport way back out to the West Hall or the dining area. It is now 4 a.m. also, so everyone's AI level has reached the maximum that it will be on night one. Bonnie's still just hanging out there. And Chica should have left as now, uh, by now, sorry, as well. Her AI level is two. She is, in fact, gone. Let's see if we can find her. She is in the restroom. She's a little hard to see, but she is up there. Chica isn't someone that you really have to worry about on night one. She'll move around, but the chances of her being outside your door over here are very, very unlikely. There's Bonnie. Let's go ahead and close that door. So once Bonnie gets close to you, the strategy that I personally would recommend is checking the left light, turning here, checking the right light, just in case. It's unlikely Chica will be here, but once you hit like 4 a.m., then I'd recommend doing this anyway. So you want to do left light, right light, then you want to pull up the camera. You can look around, try to figure out where Bonnie and Chica are. If you see them, like, way out here, let's say Bonnie's here, then I know, okay, I don't need to check the left door until I hear footsteps, you know, or if you see them on the camera at all, even, you don't need to check the left door until you hear footsteps. So, that is very important. You can also use it to pinpoint Chica's location. It's not super important, but if you want to do that and stay on the cameras a little bit longer, then you can. That will prevent Foxy from moving at all on night one, so that's one less animatronic you have to worry about while also gaining as much information as possible. Bonnie likes to stay at the left door for a very long time on night one, so let's go ahead and check that. He is gone, so let's open the door. No problem, so we're just going to repeat this strategy. Foxy's peeking, but don't worry, he won't move quick enough to get to us. Bonnie was in a dining area, but he could be anywhere now because he just moved, so let's check left light, right light, Pull up the cameras, here's Chica, so we don't need to check the right light until we hear footsteps. Check the left light. Pull up the camera again. Left light, camera. Left light, camera. And just repeat this basically over and over until you lose track of Bonnie or Chica, at which point you can start checking the other light. Let's say Chica were to disappear right now, then I would go left light, right light, and then I'd look through the cameras to try to find either her or Bonnie again. Or alternatively, I might check on Foxy just to make sure he's where he's supposed to be. Let's do it again. Left light. Right light. Pull up the camera. Flip through the camera. Take a look around. Make sure no animatronics are about to get us. I wouldn't recommend staying on the camera monitor for a very long time, by the way. I'd say 5 to 10 seconds probably on night 1 would be good. Uh, if you can't spot an animatronic, particularly Bonnie, on the cameras, then you are going to want to check the light over here just to make sure they're not right outside your office. It will take them a while to attack on night one if they are right outside your office, but the time is still surprisingly short, so if they do happen to be there, you definitely don't want to waste very much time. So it should be rolling around to 6 a.m. any second here. All right, there we go, 6 a.m. So follow the strategy every time. You should be able to beat night one pretty much every time that you play it. I hope this also went a long way toward explaining some of the fundamentals and some of the basics of this game that are going to be helpful on the later nights. So, this is a new type of content on my channel, so let me know if you guys enjoyed this. Thank you for watching this guide, I hope it helped you, and I will see you in the next one.